crystallized her personality into this one thing. Fanny packs and daddy issues. Like, we found it. <laughs> Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on The Nexus. I'm your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I will be joined by Amanda Johnson and Frank Karamarudis, so we can talk about Bubble. Hi! <laughs> hey, guys. Are we supposed to say hi? Hi! <laughs> I got really <laughs> excited. Sorry. Uh, you can find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO46. quick note on spoilers uh whenever we review something that is fictional here on second opinion we always have a spoiler free section at the beginning of the episode where we'll talk about big general stuff uh and then we will have a very obvious warning i'll have a musical jingle and stuff and then we'll get into the spoiler section of the show sound good awesome all righty um so bubble yeah. i'm i'm really excited to be reviewing this because it's like a not very well known you know it's not a star wars movie no basically <laughs> but it is sci-fi <laughs> that's your standard of popularity <laughs> everything is not a star wars movie except star yeah. wars movies I, i'm just thinking about like the the what we usually review on second opinion are either like um consumer electronics devices or star wars movies and that's pretty much it i was um I was giving it a little look the other day, and yeah, it looked like it was Star Wars movies and MacBooks. And that's really, mm -hmm. right. if you break down uh, Second Opinion, just a lot of MacBooks. And the Switch. And the Switch. I love that you said MacBooks, because like those two MacBooks are the very first laptops that we've ever managed to review on this show, because none of us ever buy new laptops. Uh <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard thing to review, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it must be yeah. difficult until you get big enough that they're sending you freebies. Yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, and then we have to worry about, like, our journalistic integrity and, right, you know, like... Right. Just buy me off. Disclosing. Exactly. Please. Yeah. If they send you laptops and, and they just want a good review, you just send five and I, I will tell you how good <laughs> all of the RAM is. That's all I know. <laughs> this one has really good RAM. Yeah. Just, the like RAM is so powerful. <laughs> Perfect. Right. Oh, man. Oh, man. Okay, so let's talk about Bubble. Um, Bubble is a... Here's the concept. It's a serialized audio comedy drama, which is, um, you know, a great, like, vomit of words. There's labels <laughs> on labels. Uh, yep. It's a pretty uh, unique thing. And I guess yeah, pretty I, unique is kind of a contradiction in terms. But it's, it's very... It's, it's unique. It's either unique or it's not unique. And it's unique. Mm -hmm. And um, so beyond the fact that it's a, a comedy drama, uh, the setting is it's essentially like imagine if we took our society here, 2018 United States, uh, and transplanted it into a domed city that's on a hostile alien world and uh, hijinks ensue. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm not really a huge fan of uh, scripted podcasts a lot of the time. Like what I listen to tend to be... Uh, like Let's Plays or like Hello from the Magic Tavern, but mm -hmm. they're often like uh, people who are winging it. Uh, yeah. And so this is kind of the first time that I've listened to a really scripted audio podcast, and it was a great time. I had a lot of fun. Yeah, I, th I think it's sort of a new level of um, uh, production value, I guess, for scripted audio, um, mm -hmm. that it's a full cast. It's almost like a cast audiobook or radio play or something that yeah uh, not only is it tv comedy level of writing but it's also tv actor level of voice talent uh and it's it's its own thing yeah it's 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 not 2005 anymore where like the only scripted web series that we had were like you know a bunch of socially awkward nerds who you know don't know how to inflect emotion into their voices kind of thing like <clears throat> like yeah these these voice actors are really really good in bubble yeah they're great and it's it's a murderer's row of people that i love <laughs> essentially yeah. yeah there's a yeah and that oh. that definitely comes from the fact that this is a show by maximum fun um and so like the main the main way that that came into play 
uh, that I noticed was that we had lots and lots of cameos by hosts from other Max Fun shows. Um, were the were the main actors the the actors who were doing the main characters? Do you guys know if they host any shows? Uh, I think they're just actors, but I can look it up real quick. Yeah, just oh. actors. <laughs> just regular TV actors. <laughs> Who were they? So, if we're talking about like the story, the, it follows what four people? The, yeah, thereabouts. That's that's kind of the core. Yes, yeah, like, we got a few. Yeah, and then we've got a handful of uh, secondary characters, and then we've got a whole bunch of like kind of mostly one shot cameos. Yeah, Allison Becker, who plays Morgan, is an actress I've seen in a few things. I don't think she has a podcast, and Eliza Skinner is a comedian. She plays Danny. Okay. Well, and that Mike, makes perfect sense. Mike Mitchell, of course, has his own pod- podcast, uh, Doughboys, which is extremely popular. All right. What is Doughboys? It's <laughs> it's on Earwolf, I think. It used to be on Headgum and it, or no, mm. Feral. Or no, maybe it's on Headgum now and it was, anyway, it moved networks. Um, it is a fast food or like chain restaurant. Ostensibly, that's the, the format is they review chain restaurant food, but really it's just an <laughs> excuse to be... To have comedians in a room together and be, you know, I would funny. love that. That would be so good. <laughs> I listened to a few episodes of it, um, and it is it is very funny. It has like sort of a cult following around it. Okay. Does it does it help to like develop my my taste in fast food restaurants uh, <laughs> if I if I listen to Doughboys? <laughs> Will I become a connoisseur of different? Uh... <laughs> um, possibly. If you listen long term, I think they revisit a few places. So if you really want to like go in depth on a particular, like they've done a few on Taco Bell, and um, if you really want to like go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> uh, back to the the, the main thing. It was a yeah. very long tangent. <laughs> what were Am we I talking? Oh. I think we were talking about Bubble. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we were talking about the actors. <laughs> oh yeah. So the McRoy brothers are on there. Mm hmm. Ah uh, yes. My boys. John, yeah, Judge uh, John Hodgman was in there. Um, mm-hmm. I I did also. I think the only other person I recognized was um, John Roderick, uh, who appeared in like the last episode. Oh, yeah. what was he? Was he the spoiler character? Uh, yeah, he was the um, he was the pastor. I think he was the pastor. Okay. Yeah. Oh. I wasn't sure if we were doing a, a spoiler free section. I, I think that mentioning that there's a pastor in the last episode okay. isn't really a spoiler. Can I describe the the main premise? Sure. So, uh, as you said, it's like 2018 society transplanted uh, into a dome city. But so what they talk about is kind of uh, establishing colonies on this new alien planet. And they call the outside the brush. And the brush Mm -hmm. is full of these imps. Um, But they're essentially just monsters of different flavors and varieties. And... Morgan, the main character, she was uh, a bush child who was somebody, I think that was a, a, a term that she didn't really like, but... Uh, bush baby. Bush baby, yeah. she objected to, because it's also a monkey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and she was taken in to one of the domes, uh, one of the bubbles, and she just lived in normal society, and they, they kind of replicate, uh, you know, 2018 society, but... There's also these imps that keep breaching the bubble, and so she ends up joining a app, um, which is called Hunter, but with no e. Without, with, without an e. <laughs> yeah. What is that similar to? I wonder. <laughs> God, literally everything. My, I, I took uh, computer science courses in. Well, I, I did a computer science major in college, and um, my class decided that we needed to name our product scavenger without an e oh, because you know as you do that's how, how else can you be edgy and cool in this <laughs> in modern day gosh i mean it was very edgy and cool circa 2008 ish yeah. we haven't moved like past twitter, that. when it was when twitter first started i think it was just twitter <laughs> and then they got over that phase wait a second <laughs> was it Twitter came out and it was like, no, 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 we don't need any E's. And then eventually it grew up and it matured and it was like, okay. I think. Instead of going. I may be making this up, but I'm pretty sure. That's like a kid going for, by Jimmy for his whole life. And then at some point he gets married and he's like, I'm going to be James now. 
Is that it? Is that what Twitter did? I mean, companies change their names. I don't know if this is. I'm trying to. I'm googling real quick to like make sure that it's that I'm not like completely lying. This feels like a fever dream. <laughs> it might have been. I mean, you might just be mixing it up with Tumblr. No, it was T W T T R. Oh, yeah. yeah. Tumblr oh. never got rid of. Yeah, it never got back its e. It never grew up. Yeah, it no. never left. I hope that no. Tumblr never does. <laughs> Tumblr is Tumblr. Yeah. If you add an e to Tumblr, I think they'd have to kick out like eighty percent of their users. What am I gonna? Yeah, where am I gonna go if I want my angst? Exactly. Uh, and your fanfic and slash and all that. Fun stuff. Uh, or my real good memes. Like the so, article for so what do they do in, in this Hunter app? Uh, well, they get a call to go hunt some monst- uh, hunt some imps. And then they'll go, and then they go fight the monster, deal with it, and then they get reviewed. And they get paid by this corporation, which is called... Oh, shoot. Uh, um, uh, 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 crap. God, did we even listen to this show, guys? <laughs> I re-listened to the entire thing. Uh, I have no like trouble recognizing week. when they say it in the show. <laughs> well, so it's, yeah. it, it's, uh, oh God. Okay. It's something. It's a uh, corporation. Tandem. 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 There yeah. Go. So thank God I remember that run by tandem who coincidentally are also the people who created and managed the bubbles. And as we go on, we find out that there's several different bubbles. It's not just one. And they each kind of have fun, different themes. Uh, and it's just really following Morgan and her roommate, Annie, um, a ten, two and a half Tinder date, uh, Mitch, um, who has a special power, uh, because sometimes if you get bitten by one of the imps and you're just a special person, you get one of their powers. So you get what's called the sting, which is apparently, uh, just this big laser, and then there's Van, and the, is it nine episodes? Eight. Eight, Eight episodes follow uh, these four characters as they kind of go and learn how to use the Hunter app and have a fun time. <laughs> Get on shenanigans. Yeah, that's, yep. that's the main plot is just them figuring out the app. Yeah. How do I, how do I log in? <laughs> there's a whole episode how, about, like, oh, check-ins. God. Whole episode of... I'm um, so glad that that didn't happen. <laughs> Uh, can we talk about the setting a little bit? Sure. Um, I thought it was really interesting that they explicitly call out in the very first like line of the podcast that this is 2018. This is not in the future. This is specifically mm-hmm. supposed to be an alternate present um, so that they can have all these like highly, uh, I'm saying specific again, but highly specific like callbacks, not callbacks, like references to our world. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're making fun of 2018 culture. Right. But they managed yeah. to do it in a way that, like, it should be weird that they, that it's set in 2018, but we have technology that allows us to colonize alien planets, and we have a bubble city, and and yet we're still using smartphones and apps mm-hmm. and, like, 2018 technology. Um, there's actually a, there's a novel called, this is probably way too um, overthinking it, but there's there's a novel called Glass House a sci-fi novel where it's a similar situation where they have like a protected city and they're trying to recreate a piece of the past, like recreate um, a, a old society, which I was like, oh, maybe there's like some twist that's coming up in the future where it turns out it is actually in the future, but they're trying to recreate 2018 or like the, the 2000s era for whatever reason. Mm. Well, that is that's... one of the common themes throughout the, the series in that there's constantly references to Earth an actual earth and uh trying to replicate kind of the earth lifestyle and so, right. so we know earth exists in this world yeah and or, or at least used to yeah used to we don't know which is one of the fun mysteries that you go right. to solve <laughs> as you enjoy this i think this i think they said earth was over which could mean it's just like that's so 2017 or, right yeah uh, or <laughs> earth is five minutes ago <laughs> It's just not fashionable. I, I wonder if there's any. I wonder if there's any good like fan theories about that on the subreddit or something. Is there a subreddit? I mean, for a bubble subreddit. Uh, well, the, uh, I mean, there's the Maximum Fun subreddit. I don't know if there's one true. specifically for bubble. Oh, we're gonna find out. Don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
go down the rabbit hole. So yeah, and I, I think that that's one of the really important things to note about this show is that like the the fact that it's 2018 and like the the comedy, the jokes in the show are mostly about like making fun of different parts of like our contemporary society. Um, that's like way more important than like the sci-fi aspect of yeah. the show. Um, I think you could, you could be not a fan of sci-fi and still enjoy this show, but if you don't enjoy jokes about like the gig economy or beer snobs or man buns or whatever, then you're not going to enjoy this show no matter how into sci-fi you are. Right. It's primarily a comedy podcast. Yeah. And like, like when I started listening, uh, I, I was kind of on the fence about it for the first couple of episodes. Like the, the jokes weren't quite landing for me. Um, like I could, I, I knew exactly what they were going for, but they just, they like, they were like half a step away from really getting me to laugh. Um, but then I'm glad that I really stuck with it because like episode three onward, uh, everything was just like spot on. Uh, I don't, I don't know if it was like something within me clicked or the writers shifted their approach slightly or something, but like, um, yeah, the, the, the first quarter of the show wasn't uh, quite as, as good as the, the last three quarters. Uh, See, it caught me from the very beginning, from that mm. first scene where uh, there's like a really abrupt shift from a scene that you feel like you understand where a jogger is harassing mm -hmm. uh, this woman. And it, it just like instantly shifts to a... Uh, like Buffy style. It reminded yeah, me a the, ton of the Buffy. battle scene, right? Where where he's in the middle of this like skeevy comet and he just gets attacked in the face by an imp. <laughs> and and it, there is, it's just I, I, the contrast was great. I loved it. Um, it it sucked me in right from the beginning. I'm definitely gonna have to like listen to it again and see how it how it is on the second pass through. Yeah, for me, the first three episodes. It felt a lot like they were kind of going to their extremes for, uh, like, satirizing our society and really making caricatures of characters. So, like, there was Chad, who was mm. the, the annoying jogger, who, like, he was such a Chad. There's no other way to describe him. He could have no other name. No, he was only a Chad. And I have some history with Chads, and I, I feel strongly about Chads, but he fit that role so well. Anyway, he was the chattest Chad that ever chatted. Well, no, he was the second. <laughs> I'm a more chatty Chad. Don't you worry. Uh, when I was uh, when I've I was in high Chads school, in my day. when I was in high school, my friends and I made up a fictional uh, character named Chad Dushwitz, and we created a Facebook profile for him and everything. <laughs> Chad is such an unfortunate name because there's so many connotations and so much stigma around it. I don't like the Chads I know feel like it's deserved, but. <laughs> I could also maybe they became Chads because of the Chad stigma. Maybe they weren't originally the the platonic ideal of a Chad, but because everyone expected them to be Chad, they became Chad. They were named self fulfilling prophecy. They were named Charles, and they were nice enough. And one day they got just is Chad sure for Charles gel in their hair, spiked it up, and they looked at themselves and they're like, "I'm Chad now." Hey, dude, I'm Chad now. Yeah, that. Have you guys ever met a Chaz? Ugh. Yes, I the kid yeah. I grew up with was, was a Chaz. Uh, that might be worse than blonde. Worse than Chad. Yeah. Okay, you have got <laughs> it. You found what's worse than Chad. Anyway, um, so they really showed like kind of really s just strong personalities that weren't necessarily great because I mean it was like Chad as an example uh, to really show how they were taking the show and like the theme of the show which was, it was kind of just poking fun at itself, and it wasn't necessarily super serious, and a little bit too scripted for me for the first three episodes, but, like, once everyone got into their roles, it ended up being great. And I think that's the, the most important thing when listening to the first few episodes. I think that that resonates with me, the, the scriptedness of the first few episodes. Yeah. And the ba I would agree with the that. The banter, as, as the series goes on, ends up being just really funny and really on par and just very witty. But I think at the beginning they weren't super sure about it. And so it, it felt like it fell a little bit flat sometimes. And I mean, she has a, uh, Morgan has a fanny pack that 
she uh, just always wears. <laughs> and that's kind of, she, she just finds them super efficient and she loves Earth stuff. So that's her look. And in the first episode, it feels a little bit more cringy than in later episodes where it's used as a really good gag certain certain times. So, yeah, I, I think that they had a little bit of trouble finding their footage for the beginning. Um, but once they did, it, it was a lot of fun. And the, like, cameos on it are great. Those are kind of the best characters, I think. Mm-hmm. And the interpersonal... The McElroy's cameo was amazing. Their, the, their cameos as dudes with opinions mm-hmm. it, it's the most spot on thing <laughs> it, it, it is i know so many uh, and i guess all three of us right now are essentially being dudes with opinions but i, yeah. I know these people here we are life. on second opinion yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that that was what i was thinking about when i heard their cameo i was like oh man i'm gonna review this show and it's gonna be how <laughs> they're playing <laughs> do do- this? they're playing as podcasters darn it yeah <laughs> what an accurate representation Ugh. I'm going to go drink my IPA now. Our podcast is just sort of about <laughs> pop culture, about life. <laughs> I also loved that um, John Hodgman was a uh, standard guy. who so like great. because Because that is his, like, TV character. Yes. Uh, <laughs> that was... Excellent, excellent casting. I think also one of the strengths of the, the show were its villains. And villains is a strong term mm. because mm. They, none of them were like, you know, mwahaha, I'm going to go murder the town. They're more just characters that were kind of at odds with the, the main characters, and then they were corrupted mm-hmm. by the imps, essentially, and became monstrous in some way. And mm-hmm. that was a lot of fun, and that's where a lot of the cameos were. And so I think they end up being kind of like the highlight for me, except for Facecorn. Facecorn <laughs> is just... It was just... That scene is giving me like the heebie-jeebies just to listen to it. Um, I, I guess Bonnie is really the villain, like the sort of yeah. cliche corporate uh, super villain type, even though she's got layers and depth to her. But she does start out as kind of like, a, like, oh, clearly this person is evil. Like you just assume. Yeah, yeah. And and for the for the monstrous villains that you're talking about, Frank, I really liked how they always paired up like the powers that they got or like what happened to them because of the the imp juice um, with like some aspect of the character beforehand. Yeah, it's um, relevant. Yeah. So can we go into like can we describe standard guy because I think he's a really good example of it, but would that be spoilery? Um. I think, I, yeah, let's just, let's give him as an example. Yeah. So, standard guy is typical. Like, he likes to brew, he thinks he's interesting, but he's also just incredibly basic. Like, he brews his own beer, and he works a 9 to 5 accounting job or something. Where Something to do with computers? Something to do with computers, and he's just kind of there living his life. And he went on a date with Annie, uh, Annie who's the roommate, who's uh, great. She's a lot of fun. But... Annie is just bored of him very quickly and decides that she doesn't want to date him. But Standard Guy really liked her, and he decides to try and be more interesting. But his more interesting is, like, going rock climbing and really just, I mean, again, brewing his own beer and being really into that. But when he gets corrupted by the imps, he ends up being this big, monstrous version of himself uh, that acts very interesting but in a different way in that like he's doing interesting things but he also is just super bland still and he's just kind of like hulking Mm -hmm. out and being this big monstrous guy and the the like voice filters that they use is kind of fun and it's just it's a very funny character from start to finish The, the the hulking out is sort of a manifestation of his own desire to be uh less safe i guess more unique and more dangerous uh that that like it, they're implying that his uh frustration with being called standard guy leads to him uh just sort of this is this is what i have to do this is my uh expression of my non-standardness i think he has a name i didn't say his name i don't think like the, the monster no name, i or... think they gave him a name like his name was like scott or something but i can only think of him as standard guy <laughs> It was a really standard. It was a really standard. Yeah, name. they referred to him as like Christathan or a few times, where they just. Oh uh, like, yeah. 
<laughs> but I don't know that they ever said his actual name. Yeah, so it's characters like that that end up uh, making these cameos, and I think they kind of are what make the the series so great because you have um you have fun villains and like certain spoilers that I'm not going to get into right now, but you get to see them and they make an impact and they're very enjoyable. And I think a lot of the strength for Bubble is with his cameo appearances and with the interpersonal relationships between the four main characters. I really think like mm-hmm. I really enjoyed that as well, but I'm a big and that's something that like really improves over the course of the show as we get to know the characters a little bit more and they, you know, their relationships develop. Um and that's and that's going to be true of almost any serialized fiction. Uh, yeah. But but yeah, like I I really really noticed that, especially like I think like episodes six, seven, and eight. You know, I was like, oh man, I know exactly like what the dynamics are in this group, um, and how like this event is going to affect the way that they interact with each other. I- yeah, they start. They all start out a little bit one dimensional, and then mm-hmm. develop as characters and then and your relationship with the characters develops over time where you become more invested in them and their their plight who's the narrator that is tavi gevinson who is a uh but she was she's not a teenager anymore she was a teen fashion <laughs> uh icon slash blogger slash she was the founder of uh, rookie magazine when she was very young i don't know how young but like prodigy level um and now she's in her 20s, I think. No, I, and she's I, you. What? Sorry, I, I mean, who's the narrator? Like, she's this omnipresent presence, like oh. the, and like, who <laughs> is she? Sorry, I was giving you Tavi Gevins' entire that, biography. <laughs> it feels like uh, that's another interesting thing is that there's a narrator who's separate from the main characters, but she also seems to have a little bit of a, her own personality. It's mm. really difficult with an audio drama or like an mm-hmm. audio narrative like this. To, ha- to not have a narrator. You have yeah. to figure out a way to explain to the audience what they should be seeing in their minds without explaining it in, like, like how do you explain it? You know, like, yeah. what other devices do you use? Like, Night Vale kind of gets around it oh, by Cecil. having Cecil. So good. Yeah, <laughs> Cecil has to explain things anyway because he's supposed to be broadcasting yeah. uh, radio broadcast. Um, and then... I don't know of a lot of other narrative places. I've I've seen a few different ways that this is dealt with. Like the Thrilling Adventure Hour uh, has their characters just like really, like very explicitly reference things that are going on in a way that you never would reference those things if you were actually in that situation. And right. that's part of the humor of the show. Um, well, that's <laughs> yeah. that's another strength of uh, Bubble in that they kind of do that in the last, like, two episodes a little bit, is mm-hmm. they give a little bit of exposition, and then the other characters immediately call them out on it, <laughs> which makes it very funny. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, the show's very self-aware, and, and I think that's mm-hmm. uh, another one of its greatest strengths. Like, I like that they make fun of themselves quite a bit. I've seen I've seen only like one or two audio dramas that manage to get away with not having a narrator at all and like really making it clear through context what's going on. Right. Um, but none of them have as much like action as what's going on exactly. in Bubble. Um, you know, the fight scenes, I, I can't think of a way for that to be done. The fight scene yeah, without works, a narrator. It works so much better when you have... Uh, like even with Hello from the Magic Tavern, even though it's improvised, it's still a story. It's still like a narrative story. Um, they have the conceit of we're all just sitting at a table and the action is fairly limited. And then they just sort of like describe it because also they have the conceit of they're, they're recording a podcast within the narrative. So they have that <laughs> excuse of like, I'm describing to the listeners what's going on. Whereas mm-hmm. this doesn't have that, uh, that like get out of jail free card. The, the meta-ness of the... Right. Yeah. So we don't have any crackpot theories like the narrator is Bonnie from the future or no play with she me. Sounds super like the narrator sounds really bored with what's going on yes, in the she, she could in the show. It feels a little. She's very over it. She's very like cool and and, and I think that's um, a really good fit for the tone of the show because mm. yeah, it feels a little bit like obvious reasons. Morgan though, Morgan feels a little bit bored and. and uh, like, 
whenever she has to reminisce about her past, which she does a little bit, uh, we learn a little bit about who she is and her history, uh, she does seem a little bit fed up. So, like, maybe it's Morgan. Maybe it's future Morgan. I don't know. I just want crackpot theories. <laughs> maybe it's Morgan's granddaughter's cloned, uh, like, projection itself. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Give me anything. Um, how did you guys feel about the length of the episodes? Uh, really good. Like it, it was a breeze to you. You really uh, feel the the pace of it is like very quick. They did don't mm. waste any time. Yeah, I've gotten to the point in my podcast listening career where if I'm going to listen to like a Critical Role, which is like three and a half hours, I've oh, I've gosh. committed. Like I just do anything as I go, and I listen to it as I do chores or drive or. Or whatever. So having something that's actually over and done with means that I can consume that so much quicker. And like it often became a priority because I could listen to it so quickly. And I really enjoyed that. Yeah. So yeah, it was great. And uh, there wasn't filler, as, as Amanda was saying. Right. I've really come to value shorter podcasts. I used to, yeah. back when my podcast subscription list was much shorter than it is right now, uh, I would listen to every single episode of multi hour long, just like comedians sitting around and talking podcasts. And now I have to really like ration <laughs> what I listen to. Yeah. And so when something takes up less time, it's a plus. I, yeah, I'm doing a bad job of rationing. I've got 11 <laughs> hours of episodes in my queue right now. Uh... <laughs> Sometimes I basically have a queue that's just aspirational at this point. It's not even <laughs> ever going to get finished. So yeah, sometimes I just take the L, and I hate having just a huge queue, so I'll be like, I'm sorry, uh, just whatever I listen to. You go through that triage pr- process? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You feel like you're betraying your favorites? Yeah. Goodbye, old friend. And I just delete them. And that's another thing that's especially hard about narrative podcasts, is that you have to catch up. You can't just dip in and out whenever mm-hmm. you feel like it. Mm-hmm. Like, I am way behind now on Hello from the Magic Tavern, and it used to be one of my favorite podcasts. I mean, it's I still consider it that, but I just it's so intimidating now to get back to the present, because I have just many hours and hours of episodes to catch up on. Mm-hmm. So that's what's good about this, is that it's, it's less intimidating. It's bite-sized. And it's eight episodes, yeah. yeah. And it- Right. Exactly. Yeah. Not only are they short episodes, but there's only eight of them so far. Um, yeah. I'm crossing my fingers for more. Oh, that's absolutely. For sure. Yeah. I think I think they will for sure make more. Mm-hmm. And if and if this becomes like a uh, you know okay a season is eight episodes per year, like I'm totally fine with that. Like I I wouldn't really mind uh, not having you know 20 episodes in a season like a TV show. Um, it's like a British TV show. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Goes on hiatus for two and a half years. And right. <laughs> <laughs> Comes back sort of whenever they feel like it. Here's my thing: yeah. is that does a Christmas special. If it's gonna be eight episodes and they're gonna do it once a year, like I usually hate having uh, like fortnightly releases. But please don't do it in just an eight week period where I just have to like absorb it as quickly as possible, and then for the <laughs> the other like what forty four weeks of the year i'm just like just slapping my wrist really getting getting excited for for the next season so just spread them out please well it's like game of thrones that's the problem a couple of months that's the that's the misery it you you get the high and then you get the fall after i don't do drugs because i just i can't handle that that's too much emotional if it was if it was year round you'd start taking it for granted yeah. And in this case, there aren't just like the books to fall back on, you know. Please just you, you can't go <laughs> spread it out. It's just I wonder I wonder if there's bubble fanfic yet. Oh boy. Oh, that'd be worth looking into. <laughs> that would Like what are, what are the what are the like the most popular headcanon couples that people are going to pair up? With with fan fictions, it always depends on like what is your headspace as you're going into it, right? <laughs> I mean, if you, most if fan you, fiction is a horror show. Of if you're ready for my immortal, you know, then it's a very <laughs> enjoyable experience. Yeah, I, I guess. Oh, God bless. I don't really get into fanfic, so I, I guess I don't really have a leg to stand on. I see. I thought we all had that phase at some point in our lives. <laughs> Am I the only one? Skipped right over no, it, it. It took me a very, very long time 
before I realized it as an adult that like the Lego Star Wars universe that my brothers and I invented and like spent a good seven years developing when we were kids, I was like, oh, that was a fan fiction universe. <laughs> yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> you just didn't publish it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're probably grateful well, I, that you didn't publish it in retrospect. <laughs> I did. I, once I realized that, I was like, oh, dude, I got to write this up as a blog post. <laughs> was it a good blog post? Where can I find this blog uh, post? Please link us right now. Uh, I'll go and uh, I'll go and find a link. I'll put it in the show notes. Good. <laughs> so, what's the last thing that we got to talk about before we got spoilers? Because I just wanna I wanna um, get real in depth. Oh, actually, uh, I guess that uh, fan fiction kind of brings us nicely to this. But um, I really, really dig the monetization model that they took for this for this show. Right. Um, It's a it's a standard podcast. It's freely available in an RSS feed. There's no restrictions on who can listen to it, where in the world you can listen to it, you know, how many times you can listen to it. Um, There aren't even any ads in it. There are promos for other shows on the Maximum Fun Network, of course. But like, you know, they don't have sponsorships to like break everything up in the middle of this narrative. Um, They just ask you at the end of each episode, like, hey, go and you know give us as much money as you think this thing is worth that's really maximum fun strength in that because they do a uh money drive i I forgot what it's called like a drive yeah they do a yeah the pledge drive drive once a year they can do episodes and series like this where it is just something that they can create new content and pay people to to make this because like their staff was pretty huge like the, the people that they had on this podcast was a pretty large number, but they also don't have to really rely on putting ads and like breaking up the, the, the flow of the show because, mm-hmm. you know, in April or whenever it is, they can, you know, plague us with this for like two weeks and then we give them money and it's fine. Yeah. And there's also the way Max Fun typically does it is they give you extra content if you mm-hmm. donate. So I wonder if at some point Bubble will be like incentivizing donations for like bonus episode or some kind of merch or That's where my problem um, lies. Anything like that. Instead of fan fiction, like I will like bend over backwards for actual like in canon content. And so like with like the adventure zone and stuff, I wanted those episodes because that was actually, mm-hmm. you know, in mm-hmm. whatever world. So I would just I ended up becoming a member, even though I only listened to, like, a very small amount of the actual content. Uh, And I love that in-canon stuff, and so that that extra bonus content, that's what gets me. I don't need that fan fiction, because I have the really in-depth Christmas special or whatever. And that's that's what I loved. They could do crossover episodes with the Adventure Zone. I'm surprised that, like... um... I went, I you know, I went and re-upped my membership for Maximum Fun uh, recently because I was like, oh yeah, I'm listening to a lot more of their shows than I used to. Um, so you know, I, I feel like I'm getting my money's worth for that. Um, and I went to like check the box for Bubble, and it's not on the list. Um, and that's because Bubble has its own separate like right. uh, donation doodad than the regular Max Fun. Right. Yeah, because production, production costs for this must be just orders of magnitude more than oh, any yeah. of the other shows because the other shows are just people in a microphone and this is a bunch of sound effects and like multiple famous cast members uh, it's just a lot more work how did you yeah. guys feel about the sound effects i thought they were spot on they're yeah i mean I, I haven't really listened to anything else like this so i don't know if there's there are other podcasts out there that are on the same level but i thought it was uh, one of the most like professionally done podcasts i've ever heard i remember a couple of times where like like a squelching sound effect specifically like made me really uncomfortable oh. while i was listening to it and i was like well that was exactly what they were going That's for yeah <laughs> in the last episodes there's there's one squelch and it it's just so visceral and just <laughs> invading my ear i just i am not a happy person i was driving as i did it and i like shuddered and oh not a hat. A lot of people have problems with wet noises. Oh, slurping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. yeah. It's like anti-ASMR. <laughs> Whatever the opposite of ASMR is. He's taking so much willpower right now not to make that sound because that's audio hell. 
but audio poison. Yeah, look on my podcast, I would one hundred percent just slam that sound because, look, we're all in this suffering together. But I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to do that on your nice podcast. <laughs> Ian, oh, thank don't you. Don't worry. This, this, you know, the highest quality podcast over here. Second opinion. That's look. You're a guest in someone's home. Yeah, I'm a guest, and I'm not going to slurp all over the the carpet. No. <laughs> Slurp is the word that they would use if it was in a comic book. That's mm-hmm. yeah. Look, like there's a C H L U R P. There's certain words that you just have to add an extra like sound to, and I think slurp or slop, like that S S H sound. It's not even slop. It's yeah. No, you just slurp. Yeah, you just gotta add that. It's like S C H L. Yeah. Slurp. Yeah. Or like um, schmack. It really gets your mouth juices flowing. This. Sh- yeah. Good, 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 good. Fun. So glad we're going in depth on this. At what point does this turn into an episode of The Big Gulp? Oh, no. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Oh man! Speaking um, speaking of noises, actually, uh, there there was one complaint that I had, which is um, I think the the actresses who they cast as Morgan and Annie had pretty similar voices, um, yep. and I and I had trouble distinguishing between them, especially like when they were having conversations with each other, and they were the only two characters. I was like, "What is going on here?" <laughs> like, I the only. Like and the only context clues that I really had for like distinguishing them was okay somebody's talking about drugs it's That's, probably Annie. I was gonna say I, I get yeah. that to some level, but also their personalities are so conflicting and so different that yeah. uh-huh. um like even though their voices were similar, I'd be like oh well there's drugs or sex Annie hey oh there's fanny yep. packs and just you know uh, <laughs> that's your one takeaway from Morgan is fanny packs. That's <laughs> She was like she's a good character, but she like she's she's not painted with she, as broad of a brush as the other characters. She's are. she's, she's less the practical of a one. She's a, she's a, an everyman kind of. She's the protagonist. She's the carry. Yeah. Uh, Which, to uh, Annie's Samantha. You gotta have, I guess, but also <laughs> if you got a fanny pack, it's just I found it. That's the only thing I really remember just. about this person now. <laughs> Crystallized her personality into this one thing. Fanny packs and daddy issues, like. We found it. <laughs> Can that be a... That would be the title. The, hey, I found the, the, I found the title. It's the tagline yeah. for the show. It's the title of our uh, bubble tribute uh, podcast. Any Max Any Max to Daddy Issues. A bubble review. <laughs> uh, I agree about the voices. Uh, it actually, for me, was easier to tell who was who when they were, t- when they were talking to each other because then you mm. can contrast them against each other whereas when they're talking to other people you have nothing to differentiate the two voices right. and so it's harder you just have to basically use your knowledge of the character to figure out who's talking or when someone actually addresses them as mm-hmm. their name okay i want to talk to some ships can we can we go to the spoiler section please yes spoilers now Speaking of reasonable forms of monetization, did you know that The Nexus TV is supported by our listeners who can go to Patreon and support us through a monthly donation? If you go and do that, you can get some cool rewards. Uh, For this show specifically, um, you can help vote on what things we're going to review in future episodes. Um, You also can get access to our behind-the-scenes show called The Fringe. You can get uh, early access to our show documents as we're working on them. And uh, you can get stickers. It's pretty awesome. And ultimately, you can help us to take these shows to the next level. So if you are willing and able to help us out that way, we would deeply appreciate it. Okay, talk about ships. Okay, I really liked some of the dynamics that they had. Because I liked that Morgan and Mitch ended up, like, being friends. I kind of, Mm -hmm. when they, like, Mm -hmm. throw in a love triangle just to throw in a love triangle, I'm off it. And the fact that they were just kind of friends and, like, Morgan was talking to him about Annie and and they were kind of cool. I really liked that. And I liked that there was no ship. That's my ship. Mm -hmm. Um, 
Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I liked that. You, you ship platonic friendships. Yeah, because there's not enough of them just in our normal. Platonic male female friendships, yeah, especially. Yeah. Platonic yeah. hetero friendships. Can I. D- right. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, and then. No, I, I get what you're saying that they, uh, in a in a less sophisticated show, the way that they were setting it up, it would have led to Morgan and uh, Mitch getting together. Mitch and Mitch. They, they actually kind of had a little bit of a vibe during one of the earlier episodes, but it never actually went Mitch that far. Mitch and is thicker than average penis. <laughs> He's a thick boy. <laughs> He's a thick boy. <laughs> Which was the most McElroy thing they said. Two C's. Series. Oh, Mitch has a thick boy. <laughs> <laughs> And I, well, I love I love that like none of them were weirded out by that. They were all very affirming. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, congratulations, yeah, Mitch! Good. You know, like, Van <laughs> was such a con- Van wasn't intimidated by it. No, really? he's such a contradiction because they have parts where like he's an Instagram like model and he's constantly kind of like talking about all of the the like blessings of these certain random products, and then he just doesn't use them himself. And he, he's such a stereotype on some levels, but also, like, he is also kind of one of the most reasonable characters on the the show, in that mm-hmm. he's totally a dude. He's a dude bro. But he's also, like, you know, he makes choices that are really understandable. And, yeah, he's very funny, and I like that. He's also just kind of cool with everybody and, like, yeah. accepting of everyone. He also He's another... He's maybe the most... Um, they the biggest example of a character that starts out as just a stereotype and then evolves mm-hmm. into something more. I wasn't um, expecting him to be a main character when yeah, they I first thought he introduced was him gone. in the show. Yeah. They, now, look, they had Morgan and they like made a comment about Morgan and Van having history. And I knew, I knew that it was for the, they're going to be best friends. There's going to be. On again, off again, and look, they talked about their relationship a little bit. Well, they won't, they. Yeah, they talked about... See, yeah. Oh? Sorry, go ahead. They talked about their relationship a little bit, and, like, they're just setting up, and the ships are gonna... They're gonna take off, go to the ocean, because, uh, Van... Vorgan? Vorgan. Vorgan is coming, coming home, baby. I liked... I liked that the narrator was like super against the concept of man buns but kept specifying that like this looks so good on him why does it look so good on him <laughs> she thought I he ship, was attractive I, like against his, against her role. I ship the narrator and van <laughs> uh, man I liked it when the narrator would add editorial comments like when she oh, would yeah. say <laughs> in the first episode when uh, Chad was revealed to be rich she was like yeah I know I hate this too God, Chad. He's successful. <laughs> we, that this douchebag is successful. We need to move past Chad. I'm getting worked up. Ugh. <laughs> um, Do you have any Chad backs? Yeah, Chad. God. Anyway. Um, yeah, and I also, like, the villains being really interesting in ta- and, and, like, in talking about the corruption of those villains, like the book club or uh, standard guy mm. or... Um, the preacher, not the preacher. I've been watching a lot of preachers, so it was the pastor, right? Yeah. With the stone, exactly. or like even Eli to a lesser degree, or even Mitch when he was bad for the, or like he was corrupted for that little bit. Um, I liked that they explore kind of the limits of the imps and uh, this, like the brush's power in that it's super alien. And because it's so normalized in the, the series, like, being able to see how many different things and how alien it actually is, I really like how they showed that through the powers of the bad guys. The bad guys, with air quotations, that only you guys can mm-hmm. see, but I'm conveying it in my voice. <laughs> bad guys. <laughs> like, one of the things that I just realized is when I was listening to the show and, like, you know, they're introducing the concept that, like, Annie uses... Uh, you know, this this alien uh, juice stuff to make drugs. You know, I was like, you go, Annie, right? Like, drug positive. Cool. And then I'm, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, but it's like alien stuff. And like, we don't know 
what it does. Oh, it's the ichor, but and it gets you this, real high. And this is not safe at all. <laughs> she was very casual about all that. Yeah. I really liked Annie. I thought she was a really positive character, both for like her sexuality and how like chill she is about everything. And like just she's kind of uh, she's very I, I want to say conniving, but that sounds really negative. Whereas like you can put a good spin on it in that like she's a self starter is how we're gonna. She's entrepreneurial. Yeah, mm-hmm. she she's entrepreneurial and she's gonna create her own drugs and she's gonna help some people out. And I love it. And, like, there were several people who were, like, really into her, but she wasn't into them. And she could have been, like, really mean to them, you know, to, like, drive them away. But she never did, you know. Oh. She was always really cool about and it. And she didn't really lie or make excuses. She was just like, yeah, I'm not that yeah, into no. you. And I really, that was another really good aspect of her character. Like, mm-hmm. she's really chill. Very refreshing. Yeah. Please. Sure. Yeah. She was She was more one-dimensional than the other characters, I think. She, um didn't change a ton i guess in the last mm. part she kind of gets a little more like yay team let's all and then she gets powers i guess at the very end but well she takes her um, own supply she takes her own drugs right she gets high on her own supply um and she but but before that she's a little more static than the other characters um in in terms of arc but she's mm-hmm. still fun to listen to yeah she yeah i i think that mitch had the most development over the course of the season um, cause he started off being very, very like self-conscious, not super, uh, secure in himself. Uh, and you know, by the end, uh, he was, he was pretty confident in, in what he could do. Um, so I guess, I guess if I ship anybody, I ship like Mitch and his own, uh, self-worth. <laughs> so it, the, the, like, Mitch and his self-esteem. the, yeah. the name, the like ship name would be Mitch. Good, yeah. good, good, good. Or Mitch, 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 <laughs> or yeah. we'll we'll shorten that. Mitch, Mitch Square, and just Mitch, 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 Mitch two point oh. <laughs> Mitch two, the sequel to Mitch, or just like capital Mitch, just yell Mitch, Mitch, <laughs> and it's yeah, I like it. Yeah, Mitch, but just louder. Yeah, louder, Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> or is it or is it like Mitch accepting the fact that like it's okay if people call him Laser Dong, right? You know? Oh, what like, a good name. Yeah. I love how like maybe <laughs> they had really lowbrow humor and like uh Laser Dong or um standard I mean all the sex stuff. Yeah, the sex stuff, but then like yeah. they also make Uber references um in in forms yeah. of like Hunter and stuff and yeah, it kind of there's lots of different kinds of humor in bubble and i really thought that was a lot of fun as well so it felt very much the level of discourse that me and the people that i hang out with in real life have Mm. like we we go from those extremes to talking about work to um making dumb fart jokes it they i don't think they went quite as far as like um Archer one time made a reference to like Bartleby the Scrivener, and I was like, <laughs> "What? What alternate universe did I wake up in?" <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's that high and low. Yeah, it it actually the it reminded me a little bit of um, BoJack Horseman, in that it's mm. this sort of bizarro version of our world with these really oddly specific references and jokes that target our daily lives. Uh, but it's this just alternate, like some fundamental thing about it is different. Mm-hmm. Um, although I guess it's less dark. <laughs> Bojack Horseman is very dark. But it also has that, that heart underneath it. Oh, you should watch Bojack Horseman. It's so good. Yeah, I haven't seen it. It's about a depressed horse, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's not just a horse. No, he's, he's a, a horse, horse man. He's a horse. He, His name is Horseman, but he is a horse. He's literally a horse. Uh, yeah. yeah, I've seen, he I've seen like not even promos. I've seen pictures, and that's really told me all I need to know. And I think it, it would be too dark <laughs> for me, in that I would just get real sad, and I just, I want in my head, my head canon for this, not my fan fiction because I'm not writing about it, is that he's a sad horse, but he gets happier, and that's all yeah, I need to so know. Yeah, he is. He has uh, an arc. Also, um, he is a horse with demons. And uh, and a, a sort of broken uh, inner life, but he like becomes better over time, and it's it's 
it's a redemption story almost. It's good. Uh, it's not over yet, so I don't know where it's going to go, but uh, it's it's can be very heartfelt and at times even uplifting, but it can also go down to the bottom of the emotional range sometimes. Good. It's also very funny. It's just like, and it, it's the same thing where there's a ton of uh, amazing cameo uh, voices that appear and you're like, oh my God, mm. I've heard that person on like 12 podcasts. Uh, it just has very high level voice talent. Anyway, that was an episode of BoJack Rose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, good when your headcanon works out. And back to Bubble, where right. uh, who, like, when they started uh, talking about Bonnie and she would, like, at the end of the episodes after they dealt with these villains, the villains, the bad guys, um, air quotation, uh, what did you think was going to happen? Because I was like, they're making a super team. Oh, I got really excited because I love comics and I love Clearly. super teams. Yeah. But, like, what did you think she was going to do with them? Because the actual, like, culmination of their their, like, big battle where it was, like, there were three bad guys in a room with four doors. Like, that was funny, but it felt like they could have, I don't know, done a little bit more with it. Sure. I mean, it well, was also a moment of meta. Yeah. Where they uh, are clearly referencing the fact that you saw this coming. You saw the final <laughs> showdown. You knew mm -hmm. that it was going to be these people she was collecting. And then there's, oh, it was this fourth door. Oh, it, there's rooms not just for this showdown. It's a multi-purpose room. <laughs> <laughs> Did, did they, earlier in this series, like, did they say that Bonnie captured each of those monsters? Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember. Okay, yes. okay. Because I when they when they popped out all three of those, I was like, oh, I didn't realize that this was a, a plot point that could happen. You yeah, know? it was kind like, of the, <laughs> the cliffhanger at the end of the episode. Each of the of those three monsters, the episode uh -huh. that they were in, the cliffhanger right. at the end was Bonnie, like, Ta tandem them shows up or, and... like, taking them. Or, yeah. yeah, okay. Um. What happened to Earth? And he, come on, crackpot theories play with me. <laughs> play with me in this space. Uh, Any, anytime that I'm like presented with one of these, I always just go with the Firefly approach, you know, like, oh, we used it up. We had to move. Right. That's kind of the standard, I think, is uh, environmental, whatever, got too bad, <laughs> and it's just not habitable anymore, I guess. Mm -hmm. I think it just. I mean, it could be aliens destroying it. Or whatever. It just but wasn't it fashionable. Was just not a fashionable look. Earth, like, Earth it's over. cool. You've got one sun, and then, like, that's fine. But have you been to the brush? Like, it's got three suns and demon monsters. It's great. There's drugs galore. Sex pits. You can I get think, real, real high. I think that the Earth was overtaken by reefer madness. Oh. Now, this is a cross, <laughs> ooh, cross section. Okay. <laughs> and so we had to leave and go to another planet where there are no drugs available. There's some video um, game potential there. Okay, crossover. I'm <laughs> thinking about it. Let's contact PA or something. Maybe oh, it was Taiju. We could Oh, you know what? We could totally make like a civilization beyond Earth mod for Bubble. This mm. would totally be doable. It would. Most most of the groundwork is already there. Well, I I'm done with the podcast. I'm going to go on the computer now and uh, <laughs> so I'll, don't worry. This is the first. We wouldn't even need to. Ch we wouldn't need to even need to change the uh, opening cinematic, you know, video. It's the same thing. They leave Earth. The first fan fiction I've ever made is going to be Bubble <laughs> in, in Civ. What Civ is it? Civ 6? Um, no, it's actually a, it's its own. Oh. It's called Civilization Beyond Earth. OK, yeah. well, maybe it, it, you can innovate a new format of fan fiction in a let's play format. They've already done it. So you're doing there we a, go. You're doing an LP. That's that's a thing already. Damn it! I thought I was being. There's stupid. nothing unique anymore. <laughs> it's it's 2018. The internet is saturated. Yeah, <laughs> we tried so hard. Although Bubble's pretty unique, I'm pretty happy with Bubble. Yeah. What are you guys hoping for for season two, if and when? Hmm. I mean, we have obviously the big cliffhanger of the pastor. We don't mm -hmm. know almost anything about him other than the fact that he was a religious leader who, uh, I guess, got his whole his whole town murdered because of this poor mm -hmm. thing, including Bonnie's parents. Um, but other than that, we know nothing about him. Return of Face Corn. Um, <laughs> face Corn died. I'm pretty now, sure. don't don't you don't you <laughs> insult my favorite character? There's one character. Just, I love how I've been yelling face corn without any context. There's a guy in uh, the pastor's like town and Bonnie's parents' town. 
uh, group, I guess. And he just grows really good face corn. And that's just his whole thing. Which which is literally corn that grows out of From his face. face. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I feel like if you're with us here in the spoiler area, you've already <laughs> listened to the podcast. So, of course, you know who we're referencing. Face corn. Duh. His name is like Brad or something. Like, he has a name. I don't think he had a no, name. No, he had a name. He was like, hey. Really? like Yeah. Uh, go go try Jerry's face corn, but ask his wife oh, first. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh yeah, oh my god, that was such a good line. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, it was very good. But um, no, Return of Face Corn, twenty nineteen. So obviously, we have to figure out who this guy is and what he wants. Children of the face corn. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, yeah, they go out of the bubble in search of this this mystical face corn because the pastor is like the only thing that could defeat me is from my past, and I I need <laughs> uh, my humanity back. Please feed me this face corn, and then they go, and then it's that's. Season two and season three is um, just the married life. Everyone's together. All the ships are good. And I just did it. Bubbles over. All I've, the ships have done. I've written it. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's in a polyamorous relationship. Yeah. You know who I think I ship? I think I ship uh, Morgan's dad and Bonnie. Yes. Okay. Right? <laughs> I can see it. They're about the same age-ish, aren't they? From like the same generation. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because Bonnie was uh, took took in Morgan as mm-hmm. her like surrogate mom, foster child, foster child, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I think we're gonna see some redemption of Bonnie in season two because now she's having to team up with our uh, our Scooby Gang. I actually, mm-hmm. oh no, I they're what? they're just like accelerating the stakes, aren't they? How so? Like, like, okay, Bonnie was the big bad guy, but now we've met somebody who's even worse. Oh, right, yeah. I, it didn't yeah. feel like we even got a proper um, uh, showdown with Bonnie. It, well, it was pretty fast. It felt like it was over kind of fast. I was going to say, I don't think Bonnie's actually a bad guy. I think she was um, just like kind of Morgan ended up helping with Hunter because she wanted to protect her dad to some degree. I think she was trying to get revenge on that stone and she used the tandem corporation as part of it. And she like mm-hmm. rose amongst his ranks to do that because in, in the end, like she ends up talking about how, uh, you know, everyone, these bubbles are control groups and stuff, but she sounded pretty disenchanted with the idea of it. And it seems like she had her own like machinations and motivations for why she was doing it. So I don't think she was necessarily, the bad guy, I think that she had her own motives to not necessarily, like, continue the plans of Tandem, but I think it was to continue her own plans, and I don't think she's a bad guy. Like, I think in the, the following seasons, like, she ends up being weirdly positive. It's, it's like it's like Hyperion in, like, Borderlands 2 and, and like, Tales from the Borderlands where you see some of the inner corporate workings and like, yeah, the, the the corporation itself is awful. Some of the people in it are not awful, but most of them are awful. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, and you know what? You know what? That, that makes me think, I know exactly what I want from season two. We need a Patrick Warburton uh, cameo. Ooh, the ultimate voice actor. (laughs) I would love some Arnie knee camp because I think his voice and his, uh, kind of personality would fit really well. He's actually the host of uh, Hello from a Magic Tavern. Yeah. And okay. uh, he just, he kind of plays the, the like dumb guy in in the show. And I mean, he's he's the question asker. Um, but I feel like... I don't know why I just Google image searched him because this is not going to help me know what his voice sounds like. <laughs> but I, I do think that his voice and his like sense of humor would probably lend itself really well to Bubble. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think any of the three guys from that show would be good on Bubble. Mm. Who's Usador? What's his name? Uh, uh, Adel is Chunt, and then mm. Adel Rofai. Uh, crap. Yeah, I'm blanking on. Google pause. I go behind on this one. <laughs> uh, Matt Young. Matt Young is a really good voice actor. Like he does a lot of yes, very yes. different voices. And I think he would actually, he'd be pretty good, but like, it'd also just be very, very funny if he went in as Usador. And so Ian, Usador is like, uh, essentially Gandalf, but like 
mm-hmm. a satire of Gandalf. He's a caricature for Gandalf, and he, his title is mm-hmm. like ten names long, and there's others <laughs> that are secret that we find out about that are just really dumb, and uh, he's just yelling into the microphone constantly, and it's very, very he's good. He's always adding names. Yeah. And just having him teleport into into the bubble would be great. But then it'd be Usador show. And so I don't know if yeah. that might take over. That's what I want to see, though. They did that with an episode of Comedy Bang Bang, where they Ooh. came in as their characters. Yeah. Because they're on Earwolf now. They, they moved. So. Ooh. I love when... Uh... We're recording a review of one thing, and I realize that there's a different thing that I need to really, really listen to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Second Opinion, where we review literally everything. <laughs> Maybe we, that is basically the show, yes. <laughs> we just go on. Anything that has even the most like tangential relation to this, this podcast. Toot toot. All right. Hop right. aboard the review train sure. as we just have a lot of stops and they're going to be a lot of different things, but we're going to get to the, the main thing eventually. Here to Bubble Town. Go on now. Toot toot. Shall we make a pact that once I get into uh, Hello from the Magic Tavern, we'll need to re- come back on the three of us and review that? Oh, yeah. I'll be back. I'll do that. that was my Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> impression. It wasn't very good, but I tried, and that's the important thing to remember. Please. There's just so well, much you, of it, so it would be a challenge to review the entire. Podcast. Yeah, yeah. That's that's also what I've been thinking. Um, like recently, I've been thinking about reviewing a few of the web comics that I've been reading since high school, and like most of them have been continuously running since like the '90s. And like, <laughs> oh my god, so much content. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> and they probably changed a ton over the years. Mm-hmm. So reviewing. 2018 version of it is totally different than yeah. 2002 oh, yeah. version of it. All right. Do we have any final thoughts on Bubble before we bid each other adieu? Please do more. Max Fun, you listen yes. to me. I want three Aaron more Morris. seasons and a movie. Please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I feel like Jordan Morris would definitely do more. I think it's probably a, a money thing. Like, do we have the budget for it? Is it getting enough attention? Is it getting mm-hmm. enough uh, donations? So anybody who's listening to this who likes Bubble, go donate to their... Throw money at them. Their thing. I don't remember what the website is. We can plug it. Uh, MaximumFun.org slash Bubble. That oh, click that plug. <laughs> I went there trying to find the list of episodes, but that's that's not the URL for the episode list. <laughs> that's the donation. Wait, URL. did you just put that in? Like hoping for the best, or did you Google it? Yeah, I did. Wow, I I I just like guessed. I was like, it's probably just slash bubble, right? <laughs> yeah, this is some. It's like hitting the no. I'm feeling lucky button on Google. <laughs> yeah. This is some reverse engineering yeah, it's 20, it's, that I am just not. It's 2018. Of. Who just like blindly types in a URL and hits enter these days? Yeah, right. <laughs> no one, no one but you. I like will go to Twitch, and instead of actually pr- writing twitch.com, I will pre- I'll, I will do like T W I T C, and then press enter, and let Google do it for me. Like that's as much effort yes. as I want to put in to my typing. So, oh, this I, is... I hate using other people's browsers, other people's computers, because I'm like I should be able to just press two keys and then enter and it will go where i want but your computer doesn't know anything about me why can't your computer read my mind like my computer reads my mind yeah you just don't know me like it does (laughs) as someone who works in marketing i know the extent to which uh things are creepily following you all over the place oh please don't remind me (laughs) um speaking of uh creepily following you all over the place (laughs) Where can our listeners find you guys on the internet? Good job, A+. Plus. What a transition. That was so smooth, it was buttery. <laughs> um, so you can find me at, frankly, my dear, with three A's, uh, on Twitter. I'm on oh, Facebook. Yeah, look, someone took my, frankly, my dear, which was a, a really good tagline. But there's already another one, and they got the actual title, so I have to be frankly, my dear. And I just had to sing it out. Um, Three A's, don't forget. Uh, You can also listen to my podcast at Denver Down Under, which is a comedy nostalgia podcast where my friend and I uh, 
who's from Canberra and I'm from Denver. We talk about our different experiences growing up to become better friends, and you can find that everywhere. Is that my plug? Did I do it? Okay. I think so. You did the thing. Uh, I host a podcast called Pop Culture Confessions, where we watch movies that we really should have seen already but have not, Uh, and then we make dumb predictions about what's in the movie and then watch it and then discuss. It's fun. That is a fantastic concept. That sounds so good, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) Thanks. You can find us at popcultureconfessions.com or, you know, wherever podcasts are. Or Twitter is at PCCCast, which is a terrible handle. PCCCast. (laughs) But I made it, so I can't really (laughs) complain. We can make that into a uh, tongue twister. PCCCast. 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 It's pop culture confessions and then the word cast. It's like, yeah, when you're trying to come up with a good phone number that's based on letters, right? We aren't in the 90s anymore. Yeah. Haven't done that yeah, for but decades. It's, it's, it's the modern day equivalent. Yeah. <laughs> I also feel your pain, Frank, with the, the Twitter handle because I have the least, the world's least Googleable name. So mm-hmm. every version of my name, including my, I have two middle names, and every version of all of it is taken. Oh, so that's rough. My Twitter handle is a garbage fire. If I put Kara Marudis yeah. into any form of social media, it's just mine. So that's yeah. <laughs> that's a good that's good thing of having a really long, obnoxious name. You have no other like family to speak of who exist online. <laughs> that's that's wild. But you have a brand. You have an instant. Brand. I mean, I just got yeah. there first. <laughs> Take that, mom. <laughs> Um, and I'm Ian R. Buck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck, uh, not the famous Ian Buck who works at NVIDIA. I'm the one with the middle initial R. <laughs> I did that. I yeah. <laughs> found yeah. the wrong Ian. <laughs> I really want to interview him someday because, you know, he works in computer technology, and that's what my other show is all about. Uh, and What's yeah. it like being the more famous me? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Um, uh, Mike th- Mitchell from this show has the same problem. There's a sports figure who is mm-hmm. more famous than he is, apparently. Yeah, yeah. It's a rough life. Um, yeah, those sports people, man. They just sportsmen. They. they <laughs> uh, Second opinion is a production of the Nexus TV. You can find us on Twitter at the Nexus TV, uh, or you can send us an email at the Nexus TV at gmail dot com. If you would like to come on to Second Opinion and review something with us, um, I'm always looking for guests and new ideas for stuff to review. Because as we said during the episode, we basically review everything here. Um, We release these uh, under a Creative Commons license, so if you want to use any part of this episode, feel free to cut and splice or use the whole thing or whatever you want, um, as long as you link back to the original page, which should be thenexus.tv slash SO46. Uh, If you want to discuss this episode with other listeners, you can go to our subreddit at r slash thenexustv. And remember... That no matter where you're listening to this, you should uh, subscribe to Second Opinion Reviews in your favorite podcast player. Please, please do this. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Yeah. (laughs) You know, even if you're listening to this on, like, YouTube or you somehow caught this on a radio station or something. (laughs) Are you syndicated? If you found a Uh, pod, like, if you found an iPod on the ground, and this is the only episode that you can hear, you need to go find and make an account and then go review it. Okay, this is on you. If you if you came to you know a demo laptop uh, at Best Buy and I was there before you and I left this episode up on the screen, you know, go and subscribe. If you're to sitting us. on the bus and just a crazy guy is just saying all of the parts to this podcast, and he he says the name Second Opinion, you Google and you review. Okay. If somebody just walked by you on the street with a big old 1980s boombox on their shoulder and it is blasting the podcast, you gotta go look it up. Dang. You know what? That's a great strategy. I need to If start you're <laughs> lying on your bed at night and it is pitch dark and you hear whispers just into your ear and it says, review a second opinion, you wake up, you pray to Jesus, and you go review because a demon is actually possessing you please get help a a very a demon with very good taste 
Or or it's just me sneaking into your bedroom and putting headphones on you. This is turning into the Jeff Fox movie. The guys. ghost of Ian. If you... <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. Have a Bye. good one. Bye. Bye.